I want to thank Research Consultants International for sponsoring today's podcast. They're a globally renowned lead generation firm that helps economic development organizations create real prospects. They've helped over 500 economic development organizations. Let me tell you exactly what they do. They facilitate one-on-one meetings for economic developers with corporate executives who will have projects soon. They can facilitate these meetings to where you travel to the corporate executive's office and meet them there, or you meet them at a trade show, or even have a conference call so you don't have to pay for travel. They recently launched a service called FDI 365, which provides you a lead a day of fast-growing companies that will be expanding soon. Their research has helped over $5 billion in projects get cited since inception. I encourage you to go to www.researchfdi.com to learn more about research consultants. As far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely the best lead generation firm in the business for economic development organizations. Call them now. They can help you create real prospects. Hello and welcome to this episode of Next Move Group's We Are Jobs podcast. I'm Chad Chancellor, the co-founder of Next Move Group, and today I'm happy to have two guests with us that really has content for everyone. Today we're going to have content that I think is really going to interest our economic developers as we've got one of our former site selection clients is going to talk about how they've grown from 50 jobs to over 200 jobs since 2011. And we've also got something for our corporate listeners today. We've got people on the line who finance equipment and can lease to you. They are building spec buildings. They can do real estate deals. They can inject capital into businesses. And both these companies are related, both of them out of Wichita, Kansas. So I really think today we've got something for both sets of our core listers, our economic development listers and our corporate listers. So let's start with talking a little bit about RedGuard, which is a former site selection client of Next Move Group. So they're a manufacturing company that makes blast-proof units for the oil and gas and petrochemical industry. So if, God forbid, another blast happens in the Gulf or at one of the petrochemical plants, if you're in one of these units, you survive. They can be anything from living quarters to boardrooms and offices to tool rooms, uh, really anything you can imagine. And they're, they're designed and tested to be blast-proof for safety on uh, on certain plant locations. And so I'm just living in New Orleans. You can just imagine how excited we have been to represent these guys in the past and, and to have them on here today. Talk about keeping uh, workers safe when they're on those job sites. And we're also going to talk about the Crossgate District, which is an area in South Wichita being redeveloped by the same owner as owns Red Guard. Jeff Lang, who's a serial entrepreneur in Wichita, is redeveloping a part of town that really hadn't had much development lately, but it's close to all the airspace and other, and other infrastructure in Wichita. And uh, they've already had two big announcements with a commercial announcement and an industrial announcement. These guys will do everything from inject capital into businesses to build spec buildings to buy equipment and lease it to potential clients. So I think that's really going to interest our corporate clients as well. So with that, why don't we jump right in it? We're going to start with understanding a little bit about Red Guard. And let me introduce to Darren Hillman to tell us about it. Darren, welcome and thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having us here today, Chad. Yeah, we'd love to tell the Red Guard story. Um, I guess we can kind of go back, you know, and talk a little bit about, you know, some of the successes we've had in growth. Uh, kind of backing up to, you know, in the early 2000s here, uh, starting off as a, you know, a portable storage company doing some work here with shipping containers, uh, modifying of shipping containers for offices for mainly like the construction industry and some industrial. And then um, as as things progressed and we started doing more with those containers, um, a, a blast happened at a petrochemical facility in Texas City, Texas in 2005, which uh, prompted us to work with some engineers to uh, create a blast resistant office, if you will, that was adding structural strength to shipping containers and and making that at a kind of a lower uh, pressure mitigation blast office, blast resistant module is another word for those. Um, As that industry continued to grow and they made that into a requirement, we continued to follow the industry and and, uh, started building those from scratch. you know, building up a really nice size fleet that we have today for leasing for petrochemical and, and natural gas processing plants. 
um, and creating a customized solution for those as well. Um, and you know, living living where I do, most of our listeners know I live in New Orleans. I actually had a neighbor who uh, who lost his life in a BP explosion out in the Gulf. I guess of uh, 2010 or so. I think is when that was. And and so many of the folks down here work in the oil and gas industry. So so the product you guys makes really important to me. I, I saw a blast test video you had done. So for our listeners, these guys make blast proof units that can basically be customized for what a business wants. So you can have living quarters, you can have a kitchen, you can have a boardroom, you can have a tool shed, and this thing is blast proof. Darren, talk a little bit about the test I saw. I saw you guys blow one up and you had a crash test dummy in there that's, uh, that, that got beat up a little bit and survived. So talk a little bit about the, the, the testing you've done and really how this unit keeps people safe. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are in the safety business, not only do we have to engineer with redundancy built into the engineering and, and different levels of, um, you know, areas where we, where we uh, make sure that that engineering is correct and testing is a big piece of that. Um, so what we did is, is we wanted to prove that our design worked. And so we hired our engineer and they set us up in a testing facility out in a field, you know, south of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we took our building and, and basically what the test was, was taking 1,250 pounds of ANFO and setting that charge off at about 100 feet away from the from the building, uh, creating a very massive pressure wave that would hit this building uh, to, to basically emulate what would happen in a petrochemical facility. Um, and so this building was hit with far more of a pressure wave than what it was even designed for. And, and structurally, the building was completely fine. Uh, we did have all the testing and pressure equipment inside the building to see how that would react to the human body. And and the crash test dummy stayed in his seat, um, was totally fine. Uh, the only real uh, problem he had was uh, spilling of a, a soda. And so, um, so we did prove that that design was correct. And since then, we've been using that design and that test criteria to continue to improve that engineering from there. And I know I met you guys, I think, in 2015, and there was talk back then that manufacturing in America was dead and, and you couldn't really do it anymore. And, uh, and, and so you guys, if I remember, have come from like 40 employees in 2011 to over 200 now. So talk a little bit about, about Red Guard's success and growth in that regard. Yeah, manufacturing is a, a really big key to what we do, and we have had a lot of growth in manufacturing even to the point of today having uh, some pressures there. So not only have we set up different capabilities here in Wichita, Kansas, but we are uh, developing um, property in Texas. And we have also purchased another property in New Iberia, Louisiana to do um, additional manufacturing. So uh, to date here, we're still looking for uh, more employees for manufacturing. Uh, we have had uh, some luck with the diversity in the different markets and in the Gulf with the different cycles that we're able to find labor in the Gulf and here in Wichita. Um, but that diversity has made it nice and, and the growth has been good for the company. So we can not only build the products that we need, you know, for ourselves to rent and lease, but also to do these custom projects you were describing. And also, so we've talked about the blast proof units, but I know you also make uh, storage units for construction for construction sites. I'll be driving down the road and see one of your site box units. And we got some construction people who listen to our podcast. So talk a little bit about also about that, that business with your site box business. Sure. The site box is where we got started. Uh, that is a portable storage business for commercial and industrial mainly um, in construction. And so we have shipping containers of different sizes, 40 foot and 20 foot containers that we rent to the industry and then we also convert those into job site offices so some of your previous job site offices were either trailers or semi-trailer offices we make them out of shipping containers um, and since the start of the business we've decided to grow that as well so we're up around right around 4,000 units in our fleet in a market uh, starting in the Kansas City area Wichita Oklahoma City Dallas and Houston uh, so we've grown those markets out of the Wichita market and really you know, set that footprint here in the Midwest of being a really strong, uh, one of the stronger site box and portable storage businesses in the area. 
Well, thank you, Darren. As we transition to Jeff uh, and sort of t change topics, I will tell people we got a Red Guard link on our website. It's redguard.com. And you can also, I want you to check out how these things look. They're just incredible. The, the first time I visited Red Guard, I was sitting in one of their units and they were describing to me how they customized it. And I just couldn't, I said, well, I can't picture what you're saying. And I was actually sitting in one. It was this beautiful boardroom with AV equipment. And, and they said, well, it's just like this. And uh, so I want people to go to our website and check that out so now we're going to transition to Jeff Lang and and Jeff owns Red Guard but but additionally he has interest in many other in many other businesses so he's sort of a serial entrepreneur and, and I've learned a lot just from watching him uh, as we grow our business and and one of the things he's involved with now is something called the Crossgate District which is really uh, redeveloping a whole area of southern Wichita they hadn't had a whole lot of investment lately and and I want you to hear how these guys are going about this from the private perspective now they have received some tax abatements and whatnot so the public sector's involved but but they're really redeveloping a part of town and, and doing everything from investments in real estate they own an equipment financing and leasing company so they just can do anything to really help a manufacturer or commercial developer uh, get, get started. So, Jeff, talk to us a little bit about what you're doing with the Crossgate District and really really why you wanted to spend your energy and efforts uh, redeveloping that part of Wichita. Absolutely. Chad, thank you for having us here today. We appreciate being part of your show. So, uh, yes, the Crossgate District is 13 square miles of Wichita, Kansas, we do believe that manufacturing is alive and well in the United States and in the Midwest. We have a lot of fantastic talent that's uh, just awesome in all skill sets around manufacturing. So we want to help that grow. Uh, we feel like we're in central uh, part of, the, of America and so the opportunity to build here and ship all directions is certainly alive and well. And we have multiple businesses in this 13 square miles, including Red Guard's headquarters and some of the manufacturing that we do. So uh, we felt like the opportunity to not just stay out in front of our businesses, but to do something beyond ourselves was, was an opportunity for us. It was uh, using the talents that we have. Red Guard does have over 200 employees as a total company. We're, we're over 300. In that, we just have tremendous skill sets, and so we kind of felt like we have an obligation to society to use those talents in a bigger way. We see a lot of open land here that we can develop into today's manufacturing facilities, which are in short supply, and uh, so we've been building spec buildings for the industrial sector, but we also are attracting other things to Wichita that haven't been here before. We're, we're working with Marcus Lamonis and Camping World Gander Outdoors, just about to uh, complete their facility. They'll be opening their doors in late June here and having their flag raising when that happens. So we're excited about making that come together. We also have uh, some uh, limited retail uh, opportunities that are going on, some offices, medical, several different factors are, are going on here. But rather than waiting on government to come in and, and make a difference, we just feel like we can be a catalyst we're working hard to connect with those that uh, have different businesses, have opportunities to partner with us in all kinds of different ways. And being that driver, being that catalyst has really created a whole lot of activity. Uh, this has just been going on for the last three years and, and uh, we have four full scale projects that are just really going to town here already. So it's exciting. I know when I met you guys in 2015, this was an idea, but you really hadn't landed anything yet. And I know you've landed an industry in your spec bill that I think it's called Hyperpet, if I remember. And you've landed the, the, the deal with Marcus Lamona. So talk about the successes you've had and how that's really going to catapult you into, into other success. Well, what we're doing is linking with those business owners where we've uh, landed those that you've heard and we want to keep connecting with those that are growing their business uh, we want to keep businesses in South Central Kansas, so those owners that are looking at uh, how do they grow, where do they grow, we want to connect with them and, and get involved with where their challenges are. We feel like as a private business, whether it's a capital side and maybe we can bring our leasing company to the table, maybe there's some real estate challenges. We have a sophisticated real estate company in Equiset that can get involved in helping them. 
we work with you about the site selection and the connectivity and a lot of different factors. So there's, there's opportunity when you collaborate with people and you listen to where their challenges are and we just love to solve those problems. And we've had, we've had uh, companies look at this area, and I can tell you Jeff's team, they're highly connected. So, so they can help you in a variety of ways. One of our companies, they, they introduce to, to potential customers that can, might even help them with the revenue side. So uh, we've got a lot of manufacturers that listen to this. We've got quite a few Canadian, kind of small to mid-sized manufacturing companies, 100,000 square feet, 100 job type companies. I know that's really wide, right in your wheelhouse. And, and, and one thing you also can do is, 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 is finance equipment and lease it to companies. And so particularly for our Canadian clients, we find they like to do that and keep it off their balance sheet. So, so these guys can really be a resource for you in a, in a number of ways. So if, if you've got any interest in, in the middle part of the country and doing manufacturing, then I can assure you the Lang team can help out. If I remember, you're also developing, is it a water park or, or something like that? I mean, this, is a, this isn't just commercial and, and manufacturing. This is also kind of quality of life for that part of town. Absolutely. Uh, we found a gentleman here that he and his wife are both national ski champions and, and uh, they're exciting people. They had this water park that they created and, and were involved with in Australia for the last four years. So we connected with him to make that happen here in the Crossgate District. We're expecting that to open here in two weeks. And it's amazing how much excitement there's been in Wichita to have this happen. There's nothing like it here at all. And, and everybody we see is just totally pumped up about that. We've got another project called Brightwater Bay where we've kind of created uh, Wichita's resort, if you will. You feel like you've left the city when you go out to this lake property and it's exclusive behind gates. So it's an opportunity for those folks that come to Wichita to do something that they would not never dream that they could do in, in middle America. So creating novel ideas and, and making it fun along the way for us and for our clients is, is what it's all about. Back to your Canadian comment, we're working with four different folks right now that are very impressive businesses and uh, belt leasings digging in to create capital for their needs. Awesome. And I know HyperPet took the building, your spec building you built. Do you have another one under construction right now? We do. We actually signed a letter of intent to double the space now with HyperPet, which is uh, incidentally just changed their name to Cosmic Pet and oh. light of the fact that they've purchased three more companies out there. They're now the third largest in the uh, pet industry in the nation and their headquarters are in Wichita, Kansas, all because of what we're doing. And then we have another 100,000 square feet building and that is a pure spec. Right now, we don't have a client for that. So if you're working with Chad or if you're hearing this podcast, then reach out to us and let us show you how you can make your home or a part of your business land here in Wichita, Kansas. And last question I got for you. When people think of Wichita, they always think of all the aerospace. So talk about how close you are to some of that aerospace infrastructure. If I remember, some of those big aerospace plants are, are kind of close to your part of town. Absolutely. We're right in between Textron, Bombardier, Spirit. So this is the perfect place to land in their supply chain. Textron and Spirit right now are really digging into making a much more efficient supply chain happen. So being at their door, uh, like we are just two or three, four miles away is ideal. And we're right in between the two. So you could land here and be very close to both. And of course, there's a lot of agronomic influences here in, in this agricultural state and so if you're in that world give us a call because there's a lot of creative things we can do for you and uh, jeff if you will tell these folks how to contact you if they have any interest and we'll also put your 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 website on uh, on our podcast page as well absolutely go to lang.us.com that's l-a-n-g-e dot u-s dot com all right, Jeff and Darren, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate having you. And uh, as a guy raised on a farm in, in Mississippi, uh, I, just, I just can't thank you enough for what you're doing, both on the manufacturing side and, and keeping our, our folks in oil and gas safe, and then also what you're doing for that part of Wichita. Absolutely. Thanks for having us today, Chad. Keep thank on you. Driving, driving America here, Chad. We appreciate what you do. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
I want to thank the University of Southern Mississippi's Masters of Economic Development program for sponsoring today's podcast. We work with Southern Miss a lot, and they do tremendous research for us. Whether we're working with a site selection project that we need Southern Miss's help to understand labor and the market around that area, transportation, they do a lot of research in, or uh, whether we need talent from University of Southern Mississippi. We have hired uh, their students that actually work for us as both interns and full-time employees. So you can get a master's degree in economic development for the university and they have two options to do that one is mostly an online option where you go in a few weekends and one is a more traditional classroom option so whether you're running an organization and need talent or whether you're running an organization and need research you should really consider university of southern mississippi's masters of economic development program A special thank you to Younger Associates for recording, editing, and publishing this podcast for us. I encourage you to visit their website at younger-associates.com.